Hello guys, Martin here, um, Full Moon Drummer on YouTube and uh, UK Guy in USA on the International Scale Modelers Forum. Um, this is a inbox review for the Edward Echo DH2 Weekend Edition 148 scale. This is the first Edward kit that I'll be attempting to um, model. It's also the first World War I biplane aircraft I've ever done. I've always uh, done World War II onwards, so my last build and this build are complete changes to what I've always done. The last build being the uh, paratrooper figure. Um, but this is what I'm entering for the World War I group build on the International Scale Modelers Forum. And um, so, without further ado, let's uh, let's have a look at the box. So. Nice artwork, but just a plain background, no picture behind it, sky or scenery or anything. But you can see what it is um, on this side face. It gives you some sizes: 150 millimeters long, 179 millimeter wingspan, and 96 parts within the kit. It says that this was flown um, by Robert Sornby and uh, the plane number was 5967 of the number 24 squadron Royal Flying Corps RFC A flight France July 1916 Robert Sornby was an ace pilot he got five victories not a lot but it made him an ace pilot uh, this end just another couple of pictures this side shows you colours the wings are in a doped linen and then there's grey, some wood, some pink, some green, some red and aluminum. Kit number is 8443 and as I said it's the weekend edition. Edward do, do two variants, the weekend edition and the profi pack. The profi pack's more expensive, has a few extra details in there. Comes with a colour um, instruction booklet and comes with um, photo etch. This one's cheaper, it doesn't come with any of the luxuries. But I've never seen so seen one, so let's open it. Oh, before I do, yeah, you've got the, uh, you notice on this, you've got the propellers behind the pilot, behind the engine. It's known as the pusher design. Similarly to what you'd see on hovercraft or airboats. Um, like when you go gator hunting, those airboats that they use. It's a similar sort of uh, principle, a pusher propeller. Um, Alright, let's have a look. Instructions showing that we have three sprues A, B, and C. It's given a list of colours here Mr. Colour and Mr. Metal Colour. Never heard of them. Um, and then it's got just some attention, carefully read instructions in English, Czechoslovakia and German and French. These kits are made in Czechoslovakia. Um, okay, instructions, assembly, one, two, three, four, five, six pages of instructions and then the back page is the painting guide, not in colour, black and white. Uh, let's have a look. So parts are given their numbers for corresponding sprue C22, A6, and then they have the colour callouts with them. Like the C is called C43 Wood Brown. Um, that means nothing to me, C43 Mr. Colour. So I'll be looking for some um, alternative uh, replication. So. Instructions look fairly straightforward, easily asse easy assembler. I'm not seeing anything difficult. So the first two pages are all to do with the cockpit engine assembly area. Cockpit comes with a seat, handle, a little bit of sidewall detail. 
and it's got some smaller details here that have decals. There's one, two, three, four, five. Well, a number of decals there, small decals. Three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven decals that go on the small instrument panels that are going to go inside the cockpit area just to tart it up a little bit. And then the next assembly is the wheel, axle and wheel assemblies. And then after that it's putting the wings on, assembling the bottom wings to the fuse large and then putting all the struts in and assembling the top wings. And of course this has to be rigged as shown on the box art, you can see all the rigging. So in advance I ordered some easy line, some black fine, 100 feet of it. This was $10 off Amazon.com and um, so I'm all prepared to do my uh, rigging. Alright after the wings it's showing assemble the wheel assembly to the underside um, and then assembling the radial engine looks like it's got some pipe work that goes on to that um, and that's it and then assemble the propellers on the front of that and the uh, propellers has to be done in a wood grain and then they got brass tips you can see that showing the lip brass tips, not the usual yellow at the ends. This actually comes down the form of the propeller a little bit. Alright then after that the next assembly is assembling the framework from the wings tapering back to the tail plane and the uh, stabilizers. You can see that. So that's the next part of the assembly and then the final part of the assembler is uh, put in a pipe, I don't know what that is, so excuse my ignorance, and then assembling the machine gun assembler and then um, some roller wheels here, I don't know what they do, I'm ignorant when it comes to biplanes. Uh, but what I am noticing on the gun assembler, there's the final assembly there. I don't know if you can see that. Doesn't sh include a gun sight. The artwork, you see a clear gun sight with a black frame, U frame, around the gun sight. So that's not in the kit, it's not shown in the instructions. So that's probably something I'll attempt at scratch building. Um, and then colour options is just the one in Robert Sornsby's um, colours and his serial number 5967. So that's it. Pity it's in black and white, but we'll go by the colours on the boxer artwork to get a reference. So that's it for paint instructions. Before I look at the parts, I'll grab the decals. So here we go with the decals. They're very thin. I don't know whether that's going to be a problem. Um, they're made in the Czech Republic. I don't know whether they're cartograph, but they're very thin and there's a uh, hardly any, if any, overlap on the carrier film. It's pretty flush. A lot of stencils here. Quite a lot of them. Small stencils. Whether you're going to see them show up or not, I don't know. But they're in that nice bright blue stencils that we had back then, more like a French blue. Excuse me. So I'm happy with the way they look. Only slightly concerned about how thin they look, if that's going to be problematic. 
but I'll be careful with them. Um, all right, let's open the sprues. It's one bag with a sticky down flat. We start with a grey sprue. This is sprue. There's the sprue number. I'm not seeing a sprue no Oh, here we go. A. This is sprue A, the grey one. And this obviously has the wings upper and lower. It's got the fuselage sides. Um, it's all raised detail on the fuselage. It's not recessed. And then on the upper wing we have no, that's the lower wing, sorry. On the lower wings we have some recessed panel work for the flaps. And then we have four holes in each wing for the struts. Upper wing Again, no recessed panel lines because it's all canvas anyway. I think it's a doped canvas that they used. Um, and that's ridged as canvas would be with the supports on the, between it to support that canvas. Um, and again, that's got recessed panel lines for the flaps. Um, and then it's got the wheels on this sprue along with some of those internal details the seat and then the panels internal panels for the um, cockpit area as you can see there on the inside of the fuselage side panel there are there is some detail in there not a lot but there's something some framework both sides I'm not seeing any flash, the parts look pretty crisp actually. And um, no ejector pin marks on the wings. They've, what they've done is they've put the ejectors on the outside of the parts right at the gate entry points. Uh, there, all at the gate entry points, they have these ejectors to help these parts eject which is good, they're not on the parts themselves and they've done that all around on all these parts which is nice, keeps the eject pin witness marks off the parts which we don't want so that's the first sprue, the next sprue another grey sprue and uh, let's have a look which one this is, this is sprue C and this looks like it's got the framework that goes from the front to the back, from the fuselage to the tail plane. And uh, it's got the gun assembly parts on here. And it's got a lot of little small parts which I don't know what they are until I get into it. But again, these parts look crisp. All ejector pins are outside, external, away from the moulded part. I'm not seeing any flash. They look nice and crisp. So I'm happy with that. There's just some, if you can see it there, on these parts. Just some sink marks. One there. And uh, here again, there. So there's those two parts that have some sink. But I'm happy with that. Last sprue. This will be B. As the propeller. Showing two propeller options here, twin blade and a four blade unless they both go together when you look at the instructions yeah, 
with me while I just get the propeller. It's showing a four blade in the assembler. So uh, that two blade is obviously a spare for some reason. They must use this sprue in another kit that has the two blade version. Probably the DH1 if they do a DH1, which was a two seeder version. And then they turn the Airco DH2 into the two seeder version. I'm sorry, the single seeder for the fire version. Um, so yeah, and there's the engine cowling with fuel cap. Pretty, pretty plain forward, simple. And again, the, there's no recessed power lines because it's um, fabric on the, the tail planes and the stabilizers. Radial engine there. And some struts for the wings. But again, these parts look really crisp. Sorry about that, guys. I've reached the 15 or 16 minute mark and it cut off. So again, these look very crisp. Um, I'm not seeing any flash on this sprue. All the parts look good. So I'm happy with that. And again, all the ejector pins are outside of the part. So some manufacturers could take a lesson from the way they engineer their sprues. It's nice. All right, that's it. I think we're done on that. So I'm looking forward to doing this and uh, thanks guys for watching. And uh, if you want to see a good model of this that was made up, a month or two ago, go to Alex Modeling on YouTube. He made one, he made a really nice job of it. Um, so take a look at that, it's well worth a look. It's a cracker. So uh, he set the bar for me. And uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do as good as that, but I'm going to try my best to uh, do a good job. And uh, that's it, that's my entry for the World War II suit, guys. So enjoy the rest of the week, have fun, happy modelling, and I'm saying goodbye lads. Tally-o, chocks away.